So, hi everybody, sorry for the little delay. Hope it's better now. So, um, yeah, this is my talk, so let, let, I will just start. Okay, so who am I? My name is Omar Franco. Uh, I'm a software engineer and team lead in Red Hat, at Red Hat. And I'm also uh, an Overt Engine maintainer in the Overt Engine project. What I'm going to talk about today is uh, how we made over to become a multi-platform management capable, starting with x86 and PPC64, and basically how we got uh, over to be a multi-platform. Uh, I will go through a little background of uh, uh, what we did to make this happen, uh, a little bit about the people that did this work, and a little bit about Overt for anyone who less familiar with it. Um, I'll discuss the problems that we had to face, the solution that was uh, accepted, what we did. I will show a little code and configuration, and then discuss a little uh, what is uh, still left to do. So, some background. Our goal was bringing uh, multi-platform management capabilities to Overt. Uh, starting with x86 and PPC64, and basically uh, having over to be a multi-platform uh, capable. Why? Why now? So KVM on Power uh, System was announced uh, recently, and also uh, there was another announcement of the Open Power Consortium uh, by Google, IBM. Uh, NVIDIA and some other uh, big companies, so this becomes uh, relevant now. Uh, also, it was a good opportunity to have infrastructure, to have uh, more platforms uh, support in Ovid, uh, just in case more platforms will support KVM uh, in the future. So, something very important. Uh, everything I'm going to talk about today was contributed uh, by developers from Eldorado, Brazil. El Dorado is a not-for-profit organization. They are located in Brazil and focused on uh, technology de development. And basically, these are community members that uh, contributed uh, this support. And it was a really nice work with them. And I want to talk about this just a little uh, because it was a very interesting process with these guys. So these guys wanted this integration they sent uh, design to the Overt Wiki. Uh, we, maintainers and other community, did some review to this design, some enhancements, and once this design was accepted, the development, uh, the implementation phase started. And again, we over IRC to make it a short cycle because these guys in Brazil, so it was a big time difference. And also over mails, we solved out all the issues. Uh, our maintainers work really closely with these guys, helping them um, figure out all the issues that they had, uh, making sure all the code has been reviewed in a, a timely manner, uh, because we really wanted, and we actually succeeded, to make it part of the current 3.4 uh, release for Overt. So this is a really great success for us. OK, so a little bit about Overt. Uh, anyone here already knows Overt? Okay, good. So uh, I'll go through it quickly uh, just to make sure uh, everyone will know after that. Okay, so by definition, Overt is loud scale centralized management uh, for server and desktop virtualization. What it means is that we have open source alternative for applications uh, like vSphere and vCenter, and it allows managing vi uh, virtual data centers. Um, the focus is on KVM. Uh, for best integration uh, and performance, so we are using KVM. And there is a big focus on ease of uh, use and ease of deployment for the users. So over it is really easy to deploy and use as uh, administrators to uh, create your uh, virtualized data centers and for users as well. So uh, it looks okay. So um, you could use over it for uh, small uh, environments like like this single data center, single host, running a couple of VMs. Uh, this is basically good for demo and testing because uh, here you don't have 
Uh, some really important uh, virtualization features like uh, live migration. You, know, you can grow with OVIRT to multiple, multi data center and multi cluster environment. Uh, basically, you can see here, I hope you can see here, uh, OVIRT manages multiple data center. Each data center has multiple cluster, and each cluster has multiple hosts. So, cluster is some kind of a migration domain, and within cluster, you can live migrate VMs from one host to another. Um, I want to give you a, a really quick high-level architecture for over just because I'm going to talk about these components later. So I'm not going to go too deep to uh, over it. So we have the engine. This is a Java application, runs on JBoss. This is basically where all the logic uh, relays and uh, all the decisions are taken in our engine if it's uh, scheduling decisions and other decisions. And this is also a, a, the gateway. All user requests are sent to the engine, and engine process it and uh, do something with it. Uh, the engine talks with the hosts uh, that, that, that actually runs uh, the VMs. In the host, we have agent. We call it VDSM. The agent has a couple of important uh, responsibilities. So first, it does all the host level configuration, if it's storage or network. And of course, uh, handles everything that related to the VMs on this specific host. We are using a uh, libvirt for all uh, VM operations, if it's uh, starting, stopping, and uh, migrating. And we also have another uh, package called MOM that is responsible for uh, scheduling and uh, SLA uh, services. And finally, of course, on the host, we have uh, running uh, guests, so VMs, virtual machines. And the guest agent within uh, is the package that's responsible for uh, sending information from within the guest outside, uh, if it's uh, IP or uh, applications that are installed, every information that we want to show up in the, in the engine uh, web admin and also uh, responsible for some commands on the uh, guest inside. If it's, for example, sig single sign-on, that we really have to communicate with the OS inside the guest. OK, so what was the idea? So if you remember, before I showed you, there are multiple data centers, and each data center has cluster. What we wanted to achieve is that we could have a cluster which is x86 as today, and also have clusters from other uh, platforms like a cluster, a, a PPC64 cluster, and in the future, if available, anything that supports KVM, so ARM um, is uh, the question mark. And the goal, of course, was adding this support with minimal, uh, as far as possible, minimal changes uh, to the architecture inside the engine and to the UI to use the existing infrastructures and so on. So what is the problems uh, that we had to deal with? First, Overt was designed and developed with a single platform in mind. Um, we only had x86 supported for KVM, so this is what we developed for, and this is the only thing that we had in mind. Um, what, it, what happened is that uh, there is no platform specifications. Uh, for example, VM devices uh, like network and display and disk, just the same as in the physical world, not all the configuration are supported on all platforms. So for example, um, in Overt you can have disk interface, uh, IDE, VirtIO, VirtIO SCSI, and uh, we found that PPC64 doesn't support IDE. So we had to do uh, some filtering uh, to block users from trying to use it on PPC because we know it will fail. Um, more problems that we had, so uh, many assumptions were made uh, without taking a platform in mind. So for example, PCI addressing is different between x86 and PPC64, so we had to deal with it uh, in runtime. We had to change the code that does the addressing, and I will show that later. Also, some features uh, are not supported in our platforms. Uh, for example, live migration is still not supported in PPC64. So again, it's a feature we had to block according to the architecture. 
So the solution that was suggested and eventually uh, we used was using the strategy uh, design pattern. Um, I have some uh, diagram of it. Basically, uh, the strategy design pattern, what it says that you have the interface of uh, what is supported, what are the actions that are supported, and you can have uh, different implementations. So implementation one and two will be implementation for x86 and implementation for PPC64. What it allows us is a couple of uh, important things is first selecting the behavior at runtime. Uh, we don't need all kind of special ifs and uh, cases in the code uh, to select which code to run. Uh, it gathers the uh, specific code altogether. It, it can encapsulate x86 code uh, in the x86 uh, strategy and the PPC code in the PPC strategy. And it allows uh, people that are entering the code to find the specific code very easily because it's all encapsulated together. And uh, very important is that it allows us easily to add uh, more architectures in the future. Uh, other stuff that we had to take in mind is we are uh, defining a architecture in the cluster level. Um, so we could have uh, in one data center different uh, clusters uh, platforms. So you could have, as I showed before, cluster for PPC and cluster for x86. Uh, the CPU type is reported by the host. It allows us very easily to decide if a host can run in, in, uh, in the cluster or not. And also in Overt, we have two configuration packages that are, uh, uh, we are using it as infrastructure for deciding uh, if some feature is supported. So one, uh, one thing we had to do is add the architecture uh, awareness to the configuration. So one is the global configuration for features, and another uh, package that we have, we call it OS Info. It allows us to uh, manage uh, capabilities in the guest OS level. So uh, for example, Windows has a set of uh, devices that it uh, can uh, use, and Linux has a different set. So we are, using, we are uh, saving it all in uh, one configuration. And what we had to do is to add architecture to this uh, configuration as well. And I will show an example uh, later. OK, so what was done so far? We can uh, divide it to three main phases. First was to identify and move the specific code uh, to the strategy classes, uh, then uh, changing all the configuration and uh, creating the new configuration for the new architectures that we just added. And uh, finally, uh, some specific coding for the PPC64. So um, we had to, as I said, add the architecture field uh, to the uh, cluster and also supported CPUs. We have the supported CPU list in over that we are uh, supporting. And once we implemented the strategy design pattern, so we could move all the specific code uh, to the right place and uh, basically create some encapsulation for the x86 uh, specific code. Configuration. So uh, I will show, I think it's the next slide, I will show you how the OS uh, info configuration looks like. And uh, it gives us uh, great uh, flexibility because uh, the guys that contributed the code didn't have to invent pretty much anything. They were using uh, an existing in infrastructure, so they would basically just add the new architecture and the new values for the guest OSs and configuration, and it was just working out of the box. Oh, it gives us uh, flexibility in the UI for filtering. I will show that uh, as well. So this OS info, how does it look like? So uh, this is a snippet of uh, one OS, and you can see that we added the PPC64 uh, OS, and we added this CPU architecture uh, class within. And the value for this uh, OS is PPC64. 
So basically there is hierarchy. So all we had to do is uh, add x86 to the, uh, to the base OS uh, of the existing OS and just add this one and all uh, new OSs that we are going to add, if it's RHEL 6 and so on, uh, will inherit from this OS. So basically it will be really easy to add more supported OSs once we verify they are working. Um, also, you can see that uh, here we define the devices uh, per OS. So uh, for this specific uh, OS, uh, since it's uh, PPC64, uh, the display protocols that are supported are only uh, VNC uh, because SPICE is not supported on PPC64. And this is how we use it uh, in the code. So the OS info, just you uh, ask for the package give me what display types are supported for, uh, for this OS in this, com in this compatibility version for the cluster, and it will understand from the OS what is uh, the architecture and returns the uh, list. I will show in the UI how it looks like as well. So specific uh, code that had to be done. So first is uh, the specific addressing that I talked before. Uh, because the addressing in uh, the PCI addressing in uh, PPC64 is different than x86, uh, I will show that. Also, uh, we added the specific uh, PPC64 uh, devices for VLAN and VSCSI, the SPUPPER, or how you pronounce it. Uh, a lot of front end adjustments, and uh, I will show you right after that, uh, to filter out only the relevant uh, choices for PPC. And we had, as I said before, to block unsupported features if it's uh, snapshotting and migration. In VDSM, the host agent that I mentioned before, uh, there were some changes in the topology. Uh, we added a processor name for the reported information and also hardware information that had to be changed according to the new PPC. So how does it look like in the code? Uh, you can see that uh, when we, we, this is the code before, when we were building VM drives, so there is no ask about the platform here. This is just, um, if it's virtual SCSI, this is what you're going to do. There is no uh, addressing code here because on x86, uh, we were relying on uh, automatic addressing from we were relying on automatic addressing from Libvirt, and in PPC64 we had to uh, be aware of the addressing. So, is it clear? I hope it's not too small. Um, uh, you could see uh, right under the case there is if uh, if let's say okay if there is no address, so let's create it. And basically, you can see here. We are getting the strategy by the VM. Uh, yeah, we are getting the strategy by the VM architecture. So this way, uh, the code is not aware of what, what architecture it's running right now because this, we are getting the right strategy and then running the code. So basically, running the assigned SCSI address code. So basically, the the code doesn't is not aware uh, of the specific uh, architecture because of the strategy. Uh, we also had a visitor design pattern uh, which has the specific Im implementation in the sub-project. Uh, it comes in handy. Uh, the strategy gives you the correct uh, code for the architecture and the visitor uh, is responsible for actually executing the code that for the specific command if it's for addressing and so on. I will show you an example. So you can see here that we have uh, assigned SCSI address and its uh, architecture command. And we have implementation for run for x86 and implementation for run for PPC. And you can see that for x86, it's still empty because we are still relying on the old uh, libvirt uh, logic. And for PPC, uh, we have different addressing if it's a virtual SCSI or if, or if it's a spopper vSCSI. So the controller, the addressing on the controller is different. 
So what uh, we have ready? Um, you can create cluster and mention the architecture, VMs, templates and pools, everything that Overt has. Uh, importing and exporting uh, keeps the uh, architecture uh, information. Uh, attaching disks according to the specific uh, strategy, architecture, sorry. Uh, searching, uh, we can search VMs by the specific architecture and uh, managing VMs if it's starting, stopping, you know, of course. So a little bit how it looks like. I hope you can see it okay. So this is the new cluster dialog, and you can see that uh, below we had uh, the new supported uh, CPUs, so it's all a family of IBM power, and basically once the user select uh, the specific uh, CPU, then the, the architecture is uh, set from this CPU. So every, every CPU has architecture, so it's automatic. This is the new virtual machine dialog. So you could see that above the cluster is the PPC cluster. Uh, so the operation system is filtered out, and I can see only the supported. So currently, we only have other OS, but uh, once we have verified more uh, VM OSs, uh, this list will for sure grow. Um, this is still the new virtual machine dialog. You can see, as I mentioned before, Spice is not supported on PPC, so again, uh, this is filtered out in the UI, and this is really nice because it's pretty much magic. It's all the infrastructure of the OS Info does this for us, so it was really uh, easy and nice to do. Uh, adding new disk uh, for VM dialog. So again, you can see that uh, the disk interfaces are filtered out according to the architecture, so we know that we are adding a disk to a VM which is a PPC VM, so we will filter out IDE because it doesn't work. What still need to be done? So there are still some issues booting from network on PPC VMs, and this, uh, the guys from Eldorado are uh, checking this out. Uh, but uh, more important, we have blocked features on uh, PPC because they are still not implemented or not exactly working. So live migration is the uh, most important one. Also, uh, taking snapshots, VM snapshots is still not supported and hot plug for disks is not supported. We do have hot plug for NICs, for network interfaces, but uh, disks uh, still not. Okay, so summing it up. Um, today, thanks to this work, uh, the Overt engine is multi-platform ready. Uh, today we have x86 and PPC64 already in, in the 3.4 release, uh, but it's very important to say that we now have the infrastructure to easily add uh, more architecture really easily. So once we have KVM supported on more architecture, it will be, should be easy work to edit. Uh, there is a lot more information, so there is our website and the wiki that the guys from Eldorado, Eldorado created uh, for the engine and for the VDSM, which are the uh, big projects, and all the information and implementation is there. That's it. Yeah. On the CPUs, page where you list the different CPU types, you have the different versions of the power seven, for example. Yeah. Substantial difference between them. So basically, we have difference between a CPU because the uh, virtualization features are different. KVM is different on this. Uh, on these versions because you have different features that you could use. Uh, I don't know the IBM features by heart, but let's say that one CPU has uh, some features uh, that KVM can use and the other doesn't. So I have to specifically say uh, what is the CPU type for this cluster because I want migration to work. So basically you don't have to fill this out. If you leave it blank, uh, the first host that you will add to the cluster will set this for you. Okay, so, 
Yeah, we have automatic setting uh, if you set it, if you leave it empty. Yeah. Yeah. I think that there is some issue there with the storage. Uh, I don't know exactly what was the problem with snapshot, but. On PPC? Yeah. So maybe I'm not updated. I, I hope it's, it's working as you say. Yeah. Did you, did you integrate that all in O Word or did you integrate it in LibWord as well? So or they, what's al the dis they also did work. Between that? So the work on KVM uh, was announced uh, regardless, and I think they did some work in LibWord, but mostly it was VDSM and the engine. So I think that LibWord does support it, uh, but there are issues in, in VDSM. Basically so it works snapshot. better on Overt than in LibWord itself. Sorry? It works better in Overt than in LibWord. When hope. I just use plain LibWord with the shell uh, for that, with the visualization. So that's, that's good news. <laughs> no, no, I ask you if that's the case. I don't know. Ah, it, it should, yeah, it should work. We, we are using LibWord. Uh, the same is using Virsh. So VDSM is using LibWord as well. Okay. Okay, so it's in LibWord. Yeah. Okay, that's good. And then another question, um, you said ARM. Yeah. You know, I'm quite horny on the uh, till, and I can't wait till March because I'm dead set about the new ARM Opterons. Uh, okay. Do you know of any work in that? I have no idea. I have no idea. I'm sorry. Uh, but I you didn't don't know if they, if they work on KVM for ARM? I don't, I don't think there, there is work on KVM for ARM. I don't think so, but I didn't uh, look you for didn't. it. <coughs> okay. Yes. Sorry again. Okay. So. So the question was actually, at this point, what you're displaying, or what I understood from your display, is that you already have Linux running on the machine and then you can build other Linuxes on top of that. Yeah. That would mean that the LPAR had to already be defined. Is there any plans? What would be defined? Sorry? The LPAR, the logical partition on the machine itself. Okay. So is there any plan to interact with the HMC so you can do um, configuration of the LPAR or do dynamic LPARs on it? Uh, actually, I don't know. I don't really, I don't okay. really know about this. I'm sorry. On IBM Power, so yeah, I think it's below because uh, we, we are using KVM and KVM is uh, is user space. So I, I don't I don't think it's it has any interact in that. Okay, we are out of time. Thank you very much.